that money, they spend it equally among the children who are engaged in athletics. But in fact, what they do is they take the tax dollar and they spend 90 cents on boys' sports and only 10 cents on girls' sports. Earlier this year, the Pennsylvania National Organization for Women's School Projects surveyed 53 schools across the state. In senior high schools, 379 interscholastic sports for boys were recorded. For girls, 169. In junior high schools, 180 were offered for boys. For girls, 55. Another subtle difference turned up in the use of facilities. Now, the problem is caused by the fact that girls and boys by an arbitrary regulation, are not allowed to play sports together. No sports of any kind. They're not allowed to swim, play tennis, play golf, do anything together. The result is that when gymnasiums are going to be used for, say, basketball, there are prime times and there are non-prime times. And of course, the, concept, the result is that the girls do not get the prime time. The survey also showed inequities in salaries for male and female coaches and in the number of assistants, but women begin to score some points on college campuses. Tomorrow, athletic scholarships for women. For every woman athlete who has achieved a level of excellence, there are thousands who have never had the chance. Chances are slim in a country that traditionally doles out about 1% of college athletic budgets to females. But if President Gerald Ford signs the Title IX law of the 1972 Education Act, women may no longer have to knock long and hard on Opportunity's locker room door. Title IX says that any high school or college receiving federal funds for any reason could lose the money if it doesn't provide equal athletic opportunity for women. So far, three local colleges, Pitt, Duquesne, and Penn State campuses, have begun partial athletic scholarships for women. The push is on basketball at Pitt, they're the team in the yellow uniforms. Ten scholarships have been given this year, plus four each in tennis, track, swimming, volleyball, and gymnastics. Pitt's assistant athletic director, Sandy Bullman, prophesied that recruiting women for collegiate sports will become more competitive in the next few years. Scholarships are needed because you're going to get the better athletes. Anybody is going to sway to a school, I think, that is going to give them a little reward, and that's what a scholarship is. It's not, if a girl gets a scholarship for academic excellence I think she should for athletic and I don't feel she has to particularly be in need of that financially she's deserving of it she should receive it and this is what we've done at Pitt other schools are basing theirs merely on need and not just talent and uh, I, I feel the girls deserve it in athletics as well as they do in the academic program <laughs> Unfortunately, of Pitt's $1.9 million sports budget, only $130,000 reached the Women's Athletic Department. We all know that the purpose of sport is essentially educational. It develops character, attitudes, citizenship, at least for males. When you're female, it's not how you play the game that counts, but whether you win or lose. Tomorrow, some winners. This isn't just any afternoon football game. These are professional players, a tough collection of torn ligaments, healed sprains, and reset bones. And they're women, players for the Pittsburgh Hurricanes. Some are working women, some mothers, some students, all with a common ground, a love of the football field. They call it professional. The rules are the same as uh, a guy's team. And the uniforms are the same with everything the guys do. And we play as hard as they do, maybe even harder sometimes. <laughs> well, women, you know, really have their own right to do anything to choose, you know, anything that they want to do. Um, 
I myself love, you know, every sport there is. I've played about every sport there is. And, uh, you know, as long as you love something, no matter what it is in life, you know, you, you're going to strive for it if you have the opportunity given to you such as a team, opportunity to play on a team or individual sport, whatever. Um, I think if you really love it enough, you shouldn't worry about what other people say. Quarterback Linda Earns captained the Hurricanes for two years, traveling to play other women's teams in Ohio, Texas, and Missouri. Her average salary this year as a pro football player, about $13. Professional football is hardly lucrative for women, at least not when you consider the average salary of $30,000 a year for a Pittsburgh Steeler. And being a contact sport, it presents expected physical hazards. Women football players face more than bodily injuries. Their biggest problem is the criticism from the grandstand of society. We'll talk about women in contact sports tomorrow. Most people, if they bother to think about it at all, consider sports risky and non-essential for females. Such attitudes are seemingly benign and well-meaning, but they're now being seriously questioned simply because of the lack of evidence to support the negative view. Contentions aimed at excluding women from sports on medical grounds cite special dangers to reproductive organs, without considering, for example, that the uterus is one of the most shock-resistant of all internal organs. A study of 700 female athletes showed that in childbirth deliveries, the length of labor was shorter, the necessity for cesarean section was 50% less, and that women have set world records at Olympic Games at all stages of their menstrual cycles. At recent hearings in Harrisburg before the State Board of Education, Dr. Dan Fine, a New Kensington physician and a National Organization for Women member, gave positive testimony for the elimination of sex discrimination in sports programs. The question of particular susceptibility of females to injury uh, in sports, especially contact sports, always comes up. Uh, and as far as I uh, can tell, this is another example of a kind of prejudicial protectiveness. Uh, I'm not aware of any substantial evidence that um, physical injuries, for example, to the breasts are, are important factors in uh, the production of uh, uh, breast cancer. And uh, it takes a very primitive knowledge of uh, biology to recognize that as far as the uh, sex organs are concerned, that the male is much more at risk uh, than the female. And the paternal opposition still clings to suspicions that women engaging in athletic training develop enormous muscles, bass voices, and hair on their chests. Considering that touching toads could cause warts on your hands, who can be surprised? <laughs> 